10 anglers, five competition days, two groups. Yes. And one trophy. Come on. The YPC Bank UK 2023 is proudly brought to you by Predator Tackle and LMAB. Every great story starts with a cast. A big hello to all you YPC UK fans and welcome to the sixth episode. Only a few hours remain for the five anglers in Group A to secure one of the two qualifying spots for the final. The current standings are as follows. After a fantastic morning where he caught everything from top water pike to low flying drones, CWC's AD Mason is currently in the lead and in all likelihood only needs one or two small upgrades to make the final here. Following a good 30 points behind is Predator Tackle representative Ryan Dabbs. Like AD, he's already bagged the full card but still has some room for improvement in both his perch and pike scores. The same goes for currently third place Kevin Cox competing for Fox Rage. Unlike the first two, however, he still hasn't caught any top water points. Rapala man Daniel Brackley, who was in an excellent position at the end of day one, has had a disastrous morning. Now he desperately needs a change of momentum to still have a chance of making it through to the final. However, for our other Dan in the group, it's been a bit of a different story. After a very unfortunate performance on day one, with countless misbites, the LMAB Matador has bounced back with two really solid perch. He currently sits in fifth, but we'll soon find out if he may still have a say in the fight for the qualifying spots. So grab a beer or a hot chocolate and get comfy. Here we go. So we've just got to another venue now, a completely different river, much, much wider. But because it's wider, it's a lot slower here. So we've got, well, <laughs> every setup that I've got when we've gone for the ultralight, um, just to try and get that, the 25 to 30 centimetre perch, just to try and upgrade that. Still gonna go for the pike, give that a go, only a couple of casts. And it's gonna be crank baits and chatter baits. Um, yeah, come on, let's try, and, let's try and upgrade these fish. Now we've got a full card. See you in a second. Hey guys, so uh, the gamble didn't pay off this morning. I went to a lake, Uh, unfortunately water had gone into it and I didn't catch anything. So we just come uh, to a local river, we'll see how it goes. Maybe you'll know the spot, it's quite an iconic place. Fingers crossed we can uh, catch a few fish. It's been tough what I've heard, but no risk, no reward. So we keep on hammering. Another change of spots, we're just gonna um, fish up alongside this bridge for a little bit and then maybe see if we can get any top water chub a little bit further down. I've just put a little Salmo bug on, just thinking that that walk the dog style bait might be a bit big for some of these chub and a bit aggressive. This is just a little bit more subtle. And then I will try the Salmo tiny. So just two other little top water baits just to see if we can entice a take. I must admit, there's a lot less fish on the surface than there was during training, which is probably due to this extra rain that we've had, but we must try. Right, we've just arrived to the perch spot. It's perch or bust now. We need to upgrade that 22 and that 28, and um, we're on the same spot we fished last time. So let's hope they're here today. Let's go. Oh, you swine. We're on, baby. We're on. Small fish. Lame take. Put it in the net. 71 centimeters on the multi vibe. I'll take him. Let's get it put back. Dan is still on a roll. With this pike, he passes his namesake and now only needs two fish for the full card. What makes it slightly easier? is that the species he needs now is irrelevant. Meanwhile, AD is back again at a familiar spot trying for his less 
favoured target fish, stripy perch. Right, so I've arrived at the perch spot. Um, it's a long walk from the car, so I'm a bit tired and it's, it's quite warm now. So this is the spot we fished in our last episode. It didn't really produce. We did manage to get a couple of fish off it, but they were only quite small. So we're hoping we do a little bit better today. Um, wish us luck. So next to where we're surface fishing, there's a lovely little sort of man-made structure up the side. So I've just picked up the um, twitch and jig, three to 14 gram, and just um, pull in three grams through, just through the margins. It's just with my thousand size warrior in the hope that there might be a decent perch right up tight along the, the wall and the structure. Didn't think I'd be saying it this weekend or this week, but I want the sun to come back out so I can get a top water fish. Yeah, we just keep trying. We're going to fish up the rest of this stretch for probably 30 more minutes and then we're going to go to a new canal. Hope that uh, it's not somewhere I've fished for a few months because I didn't really want to pre-fish the spots that I'm fishing in this tournament. I wanted to go on a river, but there's been reports of a sewage leak on the river I went to fish, so that's a write-off. So, another canal up. Oh. Yeah, I know the fish are there, so it's always worth a shout. Two more fish to catch, three and a half hours to do it. Not much content here, mate, unfortunately. <laughs> Come on, perch. Let me see it fry round the edge of black water there. When it goes underneath bridge, it's like a, it's such a nice looking spot. Normally a really good area for all sorts of predators, pike, perch, chub, everything. So it's a good possibility. On the top water, is it going to be big enough? And can we get it in? Again, really important to have a long net here. Oh, I don't think it's going to be big enough. Oh, I don't think it's going to be 40. Nowhere near. So he's about 34, 35. So lovely coloured fish, just not the right size. Well guys, we've just come up to the end of the section of canal we're fishing. Usually a good spot for perch, but I've only brought my medium set with me today. So we're only gonna get big ones here. I should have got my perch out of the car. I'm regretting it now. Huge, huge shoals of tiny little bait fish. They're just gonna be hoovering up, just cruising these edges. The perch are gonna be underneath them, but. So we're gonna spend maybe 30 minutes and then we're gonna shoot off to a new canal and target pike again. So nice to see all this bait fish. It's been a really good spawn this year, so. Looks good for the next few years of fish in this canal. So Dan is already planning for next season, whereas Daniel is entangled in the here and now. What happens when you carry too many rods around? What is actually going on? The water's looking really good, considering what I've heard from people and stuff. So I'm really hoping something might happen. It's going to be the same size. <laughs> oh, cast to a bigger one and a small one comes shooting out of nowhere. Another lovely little chub on top water, but yet again, too small. We won't even measure that one. Yeah, so quite often it's what we would call the fish come to the plop. So they come to the noise of the bait landing in the water. And I think if you can get it up close to the trees, they probably think it's a bug or you know, um, a nut or a bit of fruit that's falling out of the trees. Need to um, probably wait and try and find a bigger and, and sight fish. To it. <laughs> that, that isn't going to happen. <laughs> Our top water fishing might be over for a little bit. We've got a family over there jumping in the water and yeah, that's top water done for a little bit in this swim, I think. 
Well, as we was walking down, we saw some really interesting little dark patches in between all the weeds. So I think if we're going to walk back up, we'll um, pike fish our way back up. It might be an easier upgrade than trying to get a top water fish. <laughs> right, guys, just walk back to the car. Good fishing this morning, but it's died off a little bit now, so we're going to change spots. New canal, similar water to what we're fishing now, but it's virgin water for today, so the fish haven't seen my bait. Two and a half hours to catch two fish. It sounds easy, but it's been difficult these last few days. I'm not going to lie. It's uh, been very, very stressful. For, it's very stressful for me. Something I'm not used to fishing under pressure, but it's a learning experience. And yeah, two fish, two hours. Let's get them caught. Never good. Never good. Bloody wind. Lost me lure. Wind took the braid into the trees. So I'm just setting back up. This is what I'd call my light pike fishing stuff. So I've got um, 30 pound braid, just putting on 16 pound fluoro. And then on the end of there, I will put a, um, a small wire trace. I just like to have a bit of fluoro between the braid and my wire whether it helps or not i'm not sure but it's a confidence thing and i always prefer it knotable wire so just a simple little double overhand knot nice and strong especially when there's so much weed about like we've got today it's somewhere else that won't catch up on the weed so if you add a swivel there you're more likely to catch up on the weed than you are with a just a little knot there another nice simple little blood knot just with a little clip on the end and we're good to go again. Tackle bag of doom, everything's fallen over. I'm gonna stick with some bright and leery, just see if we can get one pull from a pike. So this light pike rod I'm using is um, another one from the Fox range. This is the Terminator Jigger, and it's um, 15 to 50 grams, 2.4 meters, and just a little bit bigger reel, so two and a half thousand as opposed to the thousand or 1500 that I'm using on the perch gear. Oh, that's better. Wind's died down now, so it made casting a lot easier. <laughs> well, I've just switched the um, crankbait from the bait casting setup to the spinning, because that wind and that's died down typically. But it means you're gonna get greater distance casting these cranks and a bit more control into the wind. Unreliable weather and unwelcome swimmers don't make it any easier for our anglers as the time moves on relentlessly. Yes, fish on, fish on. Tiny pike, tiny pike, don't, we don't need to worry about that one. <laughs> oh, I thought that might be a perch then. And away she goes. All right guys, slight change of plan. Uh, the road was closed going to the canal we wanted to fish. Uh, so we had to do a massive detour. And past doing that detail, we were passing this stretch of canal. And it's somewhere where you can come, and if the perch are in the mood, you can catch a lot of fish. So I thought, seeing as we're driving past, we can give this 30 minutes. Got the finesse fillet tube one to start with, just on the bottom. See if you get a few bites. I think I might just change over to a small crawler or something. Try fill the card, you know, 22 centimeter perch. It shouldn't be as difficult as it is to catch a fish of that size, but it has been, so. Yeah, we'll see how this goes and then we'll be moving again. What is happening is not a lot. <laughs> There's not a lot happening. We had a little jack just a couple of minutes ago. It's a stretch I've never been to. It's coloured from the river. There's, I can give you a million excuses as a typical angler. That was a little tap. That was a little tap. Come on. Come on. We're not seeing a lot of bait fish on the surface here, um, but we haven't really seen a lot of bait fish. The place we saw the most bait fish, we didn't catch anything. So it's really, really strange. Let's put a big chatter on. 
Z-Man original, looks like three quarters of an ounce head. So 21 gram head, gunky G-bump, covered in aniseed this one is. So let's give this one a go. That's if you're not first in your last Ricky Bobby quote, you gotta know work hard, get so I can't get no sleep, please make my life more simple. Now's inside these shoes, so I don't stomp my tits so fell a thousand times and still I roll no limp though. Oh you bastard. Oh, that's the first bite I've had. They say the good die, you know I'm bad. They say the good day, you'll know I'm bad. Yeah, it was a new lure. We got teeth marks down here. Doesn't look like it was a big fish, but ripping the tail. Oh, not good. Ah, and again! Yep, perch, just cast a little shallower, saw some chasing fish. Oh, small one, it's not going to count, I don't think. So the finesse for the crow, I saw these chasing on the surface. Obviously not a surface lure, but cast over them, ripped it back past and uh, took it instantly. So I think we're going to switch to a crankbait now, since they're all up in the water. Well, look, it's not going to measure. 21 centimetres, just under. Not what we want. Get that back, retie, a lot of crankbaits going on. I was using the finesse fillet crow, it's usually a banker. I, I will keep catching with it, but with the perch being up, I want a suspending jerkbait or a crank or something. So I'm gonna put a jerkbait on. Small little jerkbait like this. Very nice to present for them. There's not really pike in this area, so I'll be okay using a fluorocarbon leader. It's more just perch, you know, if we're, if we're in a pike, obviously I'd be using wire. But for this, this presentation should be okay. Let's see what the perch think of it anyway. Yeah, there we go, we've got to follow straight away then, but just not taking it. Probably a 20 centimeter perch followed, but you don't want follows, you want bites, inconsistent bites. Got a grebe there, so obviously there's plenty of bait fish in the area. So there'll be a lot of perch as well, but yeah, wrong time of day to be targeting them. So we've just come to this bend here, because on the far side, is, you've got, well, you've got the tree cover, it's nice and shady. So we're chucking some shads, we're gonna do some crankbaits and some chatters. But what I've just noticed as I look over my left shoulder, is a cracking set of pads with a good meter and a half, two meter gap behind it. So we definitely can get the top waters back out and just see if there's any pike just sitting on that margin on the far side, just sunning themselves. That might just be obligatory to a five inch pop shad going over their head to snaffle for their lunch. But in the meantime, let's try and get some perch from over there. Yeah guys, this is not gonna work. So we're gonna go with the original plan. 20 minutes of driving, and we're just gonna hammer it with the chat bait. Two more fish. It's getting stressful again now. It's getting stressful, we need to run to the car. <laughs> you can feel the tension rising. It's not for a lack of effort, but somehow the fish are still not cooperating as the anglers would like them to. Oh! Yep. Well, at least the ones that are wanted. Oh, it's a chumplet. <laughs> it's a little chum. What is that? Does that count? Is that 40 centimeters? <laughs> Can we stretch it? Thinky <laughs> little fish. <laughs> Mad. It works for anything. It's a willow on the other side. We'll have a couple of flicks around that because it's quite shady and then yeah back in the van and to the third and final spot and this is really rubbish and i think we might even go back to the weir pool where we started 
yeah we'll, we'll see we'll, once we get back in the van we'll um, get google maps up and we'll see what the distance is between because you know it's a 25 minute drive back to the weir and we'll see if the other one if the other one's just as far we've had fish in the first place so it might be worth just risking it and going back there or do you just risk it all and then go all the other direction the decisions of the meaning of life isn't it just do I go all in or do I fold I think I'm going to go all in I think we're going to gamble and go to the spot that we haven't been to yet no risk no glory isn't it but now it's like decent perch isn't it oh. snag <laughs> Oh, oh, I thought that was it then. Yeah. We finally are here on the pipe rod. There's no monster. <sighs> Don't even think it's bigger than our smallest, but it's a fish. Where he's touching there, oh, well, 64, 64, which I think is our other one. Skinny little river pike. <sighs> might be a centimeter, I can't honestly remember what our smallest was. I think it might be 64. Kevin is right. This pike is just as big or small as the other one. So unfortunately, no improvement. Daniel, on the other hand, would have gladly taken this one. But what he needs even more urgently is a perch. So guys, um, we're here at Stratford on the River Avon. Um, it was a little bit of a risk. We've had quite a bit of rain last night. Uh, I was hoping maybe we might bump into a pike, a few perch. Um, it's, it's just really tough. We've had a bit of pollution on the river and it's Kind of not going quite to plan. I was hoping for a top water. And my teammate Tom has given me some information about some top water action for some pike. We might snap his hand off and try and get onto that. At the moment, I'm persevering with the pencil um, just to try and get some top water action. And obviously, I'm used, still using the Omen back and the Concept C2. You can cast a mile absolutely ideal for setting the hook so yeah just keep on persevering um the sport is obviously more than welcome guys hopefully i'll have something to show you a little bit later on It's a tiny one. I actually thought it was a perch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, this might be a perch. Where's that net? Oh, it's a chump. It's a chump. Oh no, it's a great perch. Yeah. <laughs> perch top water. Yeah. That's what we came for. Oh man. It missed it the first time. I'm so happy to have got that. Wow. Oh, man, I can't tell you. Oh. Oh, it's already ejected the hook. Oh, man, that was so close. I'm going to get it out and out the way because I don't want to lose this. Oh, man, it's a great fish. For this river, it's fantastic. I have got... 38. I do love perch, especially on the top water. Absolutely perfect predator. That's how quickly the tide can turn. Great catch for a much needed 76 plus an additional 15 top water points. This puts Daniel back into the race and now another sizable perch would be enough to seize at least second place. I've seen a few small perch following, but honestly, time-wise in two hours, I feel like I've realistically got more chance of getting points with pike than perch. 
I'm gonna do one more cast down this edge with perch, just see if we can get one. Then I'm gonna hide the perch rod in a bush, just because I don't want to carry it, and then we're gonna go all out. Char bait for pike. We're gonna bomb up one stretch, just maybe 300 meters of fishing. See what happens, and we're gonna to switch to a different lure and then bomb back down. Oh, just lost a perch. Okay, we're gonna do one more catch, cast, because that felt 20, that felt like a 25 maybe. They're not, they're not strictly on it right now, but you can get some nibbles. <sighs> Come on. Follow, no, they're way too small. Let's go. <sighs> that was hard work. For a couple of bites, all too small. So where to go? Snag. See this sign here for all you guys over in Europe? It means no fishing sitting down. If you're standing, you're safe. Right, so we've just come out of the main city centre. We're moving a little bit further downstream. We're going to try and hit a few key little spots that might produce a pike. I really hope we can find a perch. Um, we just have to see how it goes. I mean, it's, it's a lot tougher than I expected, to be honest. So, yeah, thumbs up, and hopefully we have a bit more to show you guys. We've got about an hour to go, I think, and went back to our second spot where we had perch this morning. So just basically walking down this bit of river now, dropping into all the little pockets, and just chancing our luck, really, seeing if we can get a pike. I think without a pike upgrade, I've got no chance. just gone three o'clock so we've got an hour to do this 20 minutes on the bridge with a crank and then the ultralight and back here so at least 20 minutes here that's what we're gonna do 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes right that's it let's go 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 oh shit it's just snapped me yeah he's cut the gone through the floor uh through the wire oh no he hasn't it's through the wire, look. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, man. That's half an hour, isn't it? That's half an hour. Oh, that means I've got about 20 minutes left. That was a big fish as well. That was a 80 pluser. Ay, 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 ay. Through the wire. Oh, no. Oh, that's fishing, mate. Not a lot I can do about it, unfortunately. Yeah, I saw him here. He comes straight out from under the bank. Absolutely walloped it. I thought he'd actually come up that much that he'd gone past the wire to the fluoro, but he's actually bit straight clean through the wire. Right, well, that's um, left us a bit short on time now because <laughs> I get a... 30 minute penalty for having my leader snap um, even though we've done everything right there as in we've got wire on um, it's just one of them bit unfortunate cases and there's not a lot I can do about it really so 
there's no point crying over spilt milk. I don't know what we've got left, probably 20 minutes now, I would have thought. So I'm probably just gonna have to keep running up and down this bank now and just see if we can nick one. 28 minutes. 28, loads of time. Let's try and find that one and get my bloody bait back. Oh, there he is there. He's not happy, he's swimming about with my lure in his mouth. So I absolutely hate leaving any traces in a fish, but I mean, that was um, completely unavoidable. But the only good thing is, is it's um, just a single hook and no trebles on there, but it's still not, um, not ideal. Oh, that pike might haunt me for days. Many anglers unfortunately know this terrible feeling. Kevin, and even more so the pike, are let down by the material at the worst possible time. Nothing left to do but hope for the best. Elsewhere, Daniel must have thought something similar. Ow, 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 ow. Ow, everything's attacking me. Oh man, this is, this is gonna be a disaster. Fish. Oh, it's been hardest fish I've ever caught in my life. That's been hardest fish I've ever caught in my life. Oh, I'm not going to lie to you, that's been hard. But let's get this out, get it measured, and we'll get it straight back and keep going. There's a chance it, there might be another fish down there. I just got it down this margin. Boat had just gone past. I had slack line, slack line because the boat had gone over the top of me and I lifted up and boom, it smacked it straight away. So let's uh, get it in. It looks 30 plus to me, so or late 20s. Let's have a look. 30, bang on. Not the biggest perch I've ever caught, but I can't tell you that has been a fish hard to catch. Let's get it back and uh, see if we can just snag another one. It's an upgrade from a 22, so it's points on the board. Mm, thank you so much, honestly. Thank you so much for being stupid enough to take that rig. What kind words. He wouldn't have needed it as much as the others, but still, this gullible perch solidifies Aidy's lead. Big us. Thanks for fucking calling by. <laughs> Gotta tell you. Let's try and catch another one. Right quick. When you're on him, you're on him. When you're on him, you are on him. Right, let's get that one done really quickly. Yep, that's 31. That's 31, mate. 31, yeah, definitely. Super happy, it's an upgrade by three centimeters, which is six points. Mwah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, she's happy. Look at Finn, see Finn up in there. She ain't happy. Look at that. There she goes. She ain't happy. All right, got to go back. It's a spot that's got them. There's rocks all the way down here and it's literally, if you dink it over at rocks, they get smacked. So let's keep going. You never know, there might be slightly bigger fish down there. That's two fish from opposite ends that swim. So we'll, uh, we'll keep hammering, as Ava likes to say. Keep on hammering. A legendary phrase that Kevin and our viewers from mainline Europe know all too well. Kevin, however, hasn't got too much hammering time left. Well, it looks really weedy that way. I think I'm just going to have to um, drop into a couple of the ones I've just fished. I've got probably less than 10 minutes now, so keep our fingers crossed. 
but we've had no follows at all on the crank. So I'm going to make it an early decision and just go to the finesse stuff for now. And see if we can just pick up that bite. I love the colour. It's a little bit completely unique. A little bit completely? Yeah, man. Totally unique. Nice bright pink tail. Purpley. Oh, the pressure's on now. No! No, 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 no. Oh, Jesus Christ alive. <laughs> Two goes that one had at it. Would have been a nice way to finish off. Oh no, we've seen this before, only with a different participant. Speaking of the devil. A pike has just took my perch. And it. Guys, just doing some perch fishing. Just put the finesse fillet worm on. I'm not sure if I hooked a perch and then a pike took it or a pike took this, but I think I have a very big pike hooked right now. So we're gonna play this very, very carefully. Six centimeter, tiny little worm on a tiny little hook. I saw the pike swirl, it looked very nice, so. If we land this, it'd be a great end to the day. I'm going to have to be very, very careful to get this in. Very thin gauge hook, light rod, light line. I'm not sure he knows his hook yet, so we might be able to trick him to come into the net easily. That's the plan. So if he goes mental, he could easily throw the hook. If I lose this fish now at the end of this, oh my god. Please don't come off. This is a nice fish, I think. I had, cameraman was playing with the drone, and I had a huge perch follow a bait up as well. Okay, the pike's not as big as I thought, but it's a good scoring fish. We missed him, we missed him. Yeah, it's like an 80 maybe. Could have been in the net right then. Come on, I need this fish. I need this fish. Please do not come off. Now he knows I'm here. <laughs> now he knows I'm here. Oh, come on, buddy. Make it easy for us both. Quicker you're in, the quicker you're back. <sighs> Less nerves for both of us, buddy. If I'd have got him in that first swoop then, that'd have been perfect. But now he knows I'm here, he's gonna fight a little harder and a little longer.
Yes! I fought so hard for that fish. Oh my God, I've hooked a perch in the net as well. Well, the, the pike is hooked in the mouth. First fish in the afternoon for me. Hooked right in the corner of the mouth there. Six centimetre finesse fillet worm. I think he did take a perch because there's a perch in the net. We'll take a look at that in a sec. But as you can see there, hooked well and truly in the mouth. It's like 70. It's a very important fish for me though. But if you see, yeah, so he's either spat that up separately or he took that off the bait and the hook transferred to the pike. So yeah, that's an awesome fish. All right guys, we'll get a measure on this fish. I don't want to keep it out long because it was a long fight for a fish in these sort of temperatures. 74, cameraman approved. So 74, trying to get some small perch, but I will take that beauty fish. I'm going to get this straight back and yeah, get another perch hopefully. Another memorable scene from Dan, as well as some sweet promotion for his light rod. This potential crucial fish brings almost all the contestants extremely close together with only 30 minutes fishing time remaining. Second and last spot are only separated by 33 points now and both Dan and Daniel would only need a small perch to make it further. For Kevin, however, it seems it's all over. That's it, is it? <sighs> we tried. <laughs> it's been a hard day. We've had three undersized trub on top water. Quite a few undersized perch. We've had our perch upgrades, filled the card. Um, lost that one good pike to a um, wire trace failure, which, you know, that's fishing. But as a result, that's knocked me off 30 minutes of fishing time. So uh, unfortunately, I'm done. So we'll have to um, wait till we catch up with everyone and see whether I've scraped through by the skin of my teeth. But if I'm honest, I think the lads would have um, would have got over four meters and really I'm a bit disappointed I wanted over four meters, but that's fishing, we tried. Right, so we're getting to the last 25 minutes. We've just had two fish from last swim, a couple of upgrades on perch, um, but maybe we've spooked them now, so we'll just move down next swim, it's under a bridge, it's a prime spot. I think the correlation between a rocky inside edge and boat traffic going past. Boat traffic's really important if you're fishing for Xander, when it stirs bottom up and fry gets scattered. I think perch sometimes come in and smash stuff. I've had numerous, numerous big perch on old trike gear, down margins when a boat's gone past. So, you know, there's, there's no mistaking that there's some correlation between the two. So we'll give this one a go. 25 minutes to go. So we've moved back for the last 20 minutes now. Um, I'm just sticking with top water, try and get a bonus point of anything. Hopefully if I do catch fish, it's above the legal size for the comp. If not, it's been a fantastic, really, really good couple of days. I've got no idea what anyone else has done. Um, I've done what I come to do. I filled my card, which I'm ha really happy with. Hopefully it's enough. It really is anyone's game today. It's down to the wire as of yesterday, so fingers crossed. I've done enough today with them, with the full card. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully, I'll see you in the final. Ryan already seems to be on the home stretch, but the last fish of the day hasn't been caught yet. Not an upgrade, I don't think, so not that bothered, but it's a perch. Stunning it is. All red underneath its chin. Do you know like when they've been feeding on maggots or something? Nice little fatty. Been eating plenty of 
fry, I would imagine. Oh, 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 good catch. <laughs> good catch. We got it back. Now let's get it back and try and get another one really quickly. Ah. Granted, there have been some better closing catches, but we still saw a close race right to the end and some very sympathetic anglers. Before the organisers announce the final results to the competitors, let's hear what they think about their past two days fishing. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed the show. I'm not sure if I've made it through or not, but thank you for all the encouragement and all the support over the event. I hope I've been able to give you some sort of idea or some tactics worth using and catch you on the water at some point. Take it easy. Ciao. It's gone better than day one, but we have grinded for fish. Two perch, two pike. We need one more fish for a full card, but yeah, we've got a decent amount of points now. No idea what the other guys have got. We'll find that out when we get back. I'm pretty excited to see, to be honest. And yeah, as long as I've moved up in the place, beaten AD, I'll be happy with that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Let's see what everyone's caught. That's me done. God, what an amazing couple of days fishing. It's been mega hard, but I can't tell you how much effort and time I've put into it. It's been fantastic. I've had a bit of help off a few people as well. So thanks very much, guys. Um, tried my best. I've gone out and done what I expected to do today. And uh, this afternoon we needed to upgrade perch and that's exactly what we've done. Not massive upgrades, but potentially enough, you just never know. So that's it. That's the end for me. See you all, guys. And that is it, guys. Thanks for joining. It's been incredible. I've really, really enjoyed this. Hope it's come out really well. I hope I haven't made myself like a fool. I've done what I wanted to do. I've got a full card today. For everyone who's organized this, it's been incredible. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you for Predator Tackle for trusting me really with this. It's been awesome. Over and out. So guys, the first group is over. All of you watching already know the results, but these guys are waiting and are excited to hear them as well. Firstly, I'd like to say all of you fished really, really well. You made it extremely, extremely exciting and you can all be really proud of yourselves. So we'll come straight to the results. I don't want to talk to you guys too long. In fifth place, the only person who actually managed to catch all three top order fish. Dan, well done. You fished well. You just needed a 22 centimeter perch and that would have been enough to go further. So, great fishing. You guys saw it. The first day of fishing doesn't mean everything in this competition. Today, somebody caught a couple of decent sized perch and then two over 80 centimeter pike on top water. Adrian, you won the group. Well done, first position, first place. You can make it to the next round. I thought you were going to be a <laughs> <laughs> so, and now we're coming to the next person and the last person who's made it through. It was, yeah, kind of a mixed bag for you all. Ryan, you and Kevin, you both started really, really well. Had um, good days on the first day. Kev, especially your really strong day. Dan, your first day was not that great. <laughs> Today, everything turned around. You started a huge comeback, caught some really big fish. You guys were struggling, but in the end, Dan, you needed to get yourself a 22 centimeter perch, you would have made it further. And between you two guys, it was really close as well. Ryan, you made it, well done. There we have it, Ryan and Adrian are gonna be fishing in the finals. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Who's gonna be there, you're gonna see in the next episodes. So we hope to see you there. Well done guys, great fishing. Dan, good, good, good try. Well done. Honestly, mate. Well done. Good fish today. I caught a What a day. What a day. Okay, folks, that's it for Group A. We have to say goodbye to Dan, Daniel, and Kevin. AD and Ryan, on the other hand, will be back in the grand final. But before we get to that, we need to find out who they're going to be up against. So next week, we'll show you the first half of the second day in Group B. Currently, Tom Hunt and Chris Bartle are in a neck and neck race to win the group. Ash Costa and George Lamb are still within striking distance, 
while Tom Knight has already announced that he has a lot planned for day two. So join us next Sunday at 7pm and please leave us a like, comment and of course subscribe to this channel. Cheers everyone!